Our team is the Quiet Dark. I'm Mike. I'm Jeff. Um, our game is implemented with Oculus Rift, and it's an A-B journey, meaning the player is going to go from point A and point B, and that's it. They're not going to make a round. Trip. They're not going to make a trip to B and then go back to A. Um, it's centered around an abandoned building that's kind of in the woods. We thought about using like a forest, but we realized it was just going going to be way too in-depth and way too complicated. Um, the game requirements. Obviously, it has to be enjoyable, and it has to be fun. If video games aren't enjoyable, nobody will play them. Um, it's in the horror genre. We couldn't really think that it would fit in any other genre, just due to the nature of the game. Um, obviously, it incorporates the virtual reality software using the Oculus Right. And another reason why we picked horror is mainly because we thought that that was probably the best application for virtual reality. Um, obviously, things are a lot scarier when they're right in your face, so we thought virtual reality lent itself very well to that. So, the gameplay. It's similar to a first-person shooter, but obviously the user is not holding a weapon. There's nothing in their hands. And unlike a first-person shooter, you don't actually see yourself. You can't zoom out of the camera, you can't look down and see your feet, you won't look down and see your hands. And we did that because if we didn't do that, you'd have to then animate the model for the player. And then if you know if the player was female or male, then they'd have to choose which one. And that would just be a lot of excess work, and that's not what the game is about. The game is not about having a character model, it's about getting to be. Um, and since it's Oculus Rift, you only see what you'd actually see. So you can't be aware of what is behind you unless you turn your head because you don't have eyes on the back of your head. And so the player movement, the player advances forward as if they were just holding W, A, S, D, or the arrow keys, and then you use the mouse to kind of change your camera orientation. Oh, you want to start with the plot? All right, yeah. So basically it starts out, um, you're just a person who stumbles upon this castle and you wonder what's in the castle, so you decide to go inside. Um, so as you move throughout the castle, um, there's a countdown that starts, and this countdown uh, signifies this monster that's coming after you. So as soon as you start moving, the, count the countdown starts, and as the monster gets close to you, the, count the, counter the counter goes down. And so once the counter reaches zero, you that's it, you lose. And in our game, there's two possible ways to win. Either you get to the objective, which is uh, the special room, or um, you step backwards. And the, how we came up with this is generally in any game, th your main focus is to get to a certain place. You want to explore, you want to figure out what's at the other side. So our game goes against this common thinking and you actually decide, no, this is a terrible idea, I'm not going to go into that creepy castle, and you leave. Along with that, in every horror movie, you're always thinking, don't do that, that's a terrible idea. You actually think they're going to tell you, you know, they're there. And since every horror game, every horror movie assumes that, we decided to change it, see, make it a little different. And when I actually came up with that, I thought it was kind of like a joke. I didn't actually think we were going to implement that. Because talking to people, no one I actually spoke to was like, oh, I'd actually step backwards, because human nature is to go forward, not backwards. So with the design, um, neither one of us have done game design before, so that's going to be a little bit of a challenge. There's two entities, the player and the AI. The AI you don't see at any given point. Technically the AI only exists in the game and the game engine. You don't see it, it never reveals itself. And what we thought would be kind of interesting and I mean a little bit different is the AI learns off of you. So if you start making wrong moves, the AI will catch up to you. And there's a ratio of that because what we decided was and kind of figured out, if the AI spawns too close to you, you're never going to get anywhere. It's just you're going to make one move and you're dead, which is not to make for a very fun game and no one's really going to want to play it. Um, with the building, it's set up kind of, I mean, it's a castle, 
So you have your ground floor, which is where you enter, stairs going up to several rooms above, and then the basement, I mean, I couldn't really think of a better term, the basement goes down and down. So as you progress further and further, there's rooms on each side, and eventually you get to the last room. Um, that last room is just, I mean, it's just four walls, and then there's a chest, and the object is to get to that chest. You want to talk about okay. AI? Okay, so yeah, as we said, the AI, it's not necessarily something you can see, but we will have uh, auditory cues so that you're not just running away from something that is clearly not there. You will know that it exists, but you will never actually see it. Um, so yeah, as the player moves, uh, the AI moves with it based on a ratio. And then, depending on how the player moves, some moves that you make will take you closer to it, some will take you further away. And so once the AI gets too close to you, then that's game over. And then, so the visual timer only appears when the AI is with a certain range. The other times, you're just moving and you don't know how long the game is. There's, there is a set period to the game, but we'll get to that later. So if you don't get to the last room and you still have time, the time you know counts down to zero, you're, you lose anyway, you didn't um, reach the objective. So the victory conditions. Uh, video games obviously assume you, know, you make a st step forward, um, which kind of goes against all human thinking. Um, if the player actually does step backwards, you win, but you don't find out what's in the chest. So it's kind of a win-lose situation, which is also how the other victory condition is. Even if you do actually make it to that room and make it to the chest and you find out what's in it, you still die. Because once you get into that room, the door closes. The AI is there. It's just a matter of time before it gets to you. And now, so we kind of went over the game plan, game story, and the plot. And we were deciding what equipment and resources to use. And neither one of us have a laptop that actually meets the Oculus Rift's um, minimum system requirements. I have a desktop workstation PC that does, but it weighs 30 pounds, and I'm not going to be lugging that around. You want to talk about equipment? All right, so yeah, so for the virtual reality device, we're using the Oculus Rift uh, Dev Kit 2. And to program everything and test everything and all that good stuff, we're using a PC that meets all of Oculus's requirements, which is Windows 7, uh, 1080p, uh, 2 gigahertz processor, 2 gigs of RAM, and DirectX 10. And for controls, we're using a keyboard and mouse instead of the Omni treadmill, which we were originally thinking about, but we decided to go against that. We decided to go against it. One, it hasn't arrived yet, I don't think. And number two, that was going to be something else we would now have to implement. And due to the fact that neither one of us are game designers, we believed that it was just going to be crunch time, and it was more important to have the game working than to have the treadmill. So with the software, uh, we're using the Oculus Rift software dev kit 0 0.40. I believe they just released an update for it. But when I was making this, 0 0.40.0 was the latest. Uh, Visual Studio 2013 for C Sharp and C++. We actually have that for free through DreamSpark, and I've already have it installed, and I've used it before. Um, the Unity 3D Store is where our textures, um, our rooms, and stuff like that's going to come from. Office for word processing, Outlook, and PowerPoint. With we're also using sound. And we thought about making our own, but we realized it would probably just be easier to use someone else's and just continually loop it in the background and then do the auditory cues when it's time for them. Um, yeah, so in order to accomplish all this, um, in order to figure out what we're doing and how, uh, we're following various tutorials given to us by Oculus to help us develop things. Uh, Unity uh, has all kinds of good tutorials for scripting and doing graphics and physics with their technologies. Uh, C Sharp tutorials, um, which is going to be used for our scripting languages with Unity. And then C++, which we're using for our AI and whatever else we need it for. Our mentor is Dr. Powell. I've already spoken to him. He actually, and I actually started talking to him about the AI he actually already kind of knew. 
and you told me like you should just use a ratio, which will be a lot easier than you having to set it up as a one to one, which could pose problems because then if the so as long as the user is moving, the AI is just moving with them. Modifications and limitations, we actually had a lot of these. So when we first started, it was a forest that had rows running all over it. And then at the top of the hill, there was a castle. Got rid of that because we realized with the forest, that is now an entire extra game level that we're going to have to write with tree textures, row textures, ones that the user looks up. And then the AI, wherever the AI spawns, would obviously be in a larger place. So there's a chance that the user, the AI actually never reaches to the user. And then when we started talking with controls, we planned on using the treadmill, but after realizing that it was going to be way too difficult to implement and actually not having one, we just kind of went with your standard mouse and keyboard controls. The game length was slotted for 15 minutes, but we realized that might be a little too long, so we scaled it down to 10. Um, Jeff has actually worked with assets before in textures, but we figured it would just be easier to just use them from Unity 3D. The audio, I know the lab computers in C1249 have stuff on there for making your own, but we just decided it would be easier to um, just use someone else's and live it. All right, so some of the constraints that we need to adhere to. Um, so we want to make this game as widespread as possible. Um, but at the same time, there's natural uh, ratings, things that are, come with a horror game. So we're keeping a, a teen rating, so no gore or graphic violence, um, just you know, naturally creepy images. Um, and then we also want this to be playable on most systems that meet the basic system requirements, so most Windows computers, and yeah, compatible with the latest Windows operating There's systems. Windows, the Oculus Rift will work on Mac as well and Linux, but since Windows is more widespread and there's more games for Windows, we just decided to go with the Windows requirements, the costs. So I used a template to generate this expense report and it ended up being a lot more than I expected. The total is well over $240,000. The prices for most of the computers come from the manufacturer's website. The workstation PCs, I used the figure of $1,000 for one. If you have two developers, you need two of them. Uh, the salaries for the game developers are $65,000. With the healthcare premium for one person, I believe in Missouri it's that $3,800 for one year. Uh, Unity 3D licenses aren't cheap. They're $1,500 for one. Uh, floor space, that is for 500 square feet at $17 per square foot per, per year. Office, we actually used Office Small Business, which is why it's 150 Then what we actually discussed was doing the game layout, like the actual, what the world looks like, and realized in an office setting we would use a game designer who actually does that for a living. So they were $3,500 for three weeks of work, which is what we decided would be how long it would be to do mock-ups and rendering. The testing, we decided we'd actually go to a public place and have like a hotel and actually kind of set up in the lobby and see if people want to test it out and to see how long they last, and if anyone actually makes the step backwards. Uh, the roadmap. You want to talk about that? Yeah, so basically, we're going to do a lot of our learning over break with C and C Sharp, uh, make sure that we know how to make all the scripts that we need to. Um, by February, we want to get all our assets picked out and drilled down. And then also in mid to late February, um, get everything designed with the assets that we've chosen. And then hopefully we'll have all of our um, entity programming and modeling done um, in March. And then in late March, we'll put everything together with our AI, our player, our assets, and hopefully start testing in April. The AI is going to be the biggest Thing for us because neither one of us have ever worked with AI before. The player movements shouldn't be too difficult because Oculus Rift, their first tutorial is you walking through a building, which is 
pretty similar to what we're doing. The testing and debugging is just gonna be us ironing out the bugs with the AI, the timer. Um, we actually discussed earlier with the walls, we want the AI to be able to go through the walls, but we don't want the player to. So we're gonna have to set something up so that the AI gets clearance to go through them, but the player does not. Um, our sources, I actually looked all of this up. Um, some of them I based off of just going to like the manufacturer or like the company's website and just using what like their best pricing was, which is what I did for AT&T and for the technology costs. That is the presentation.